Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're well. Hope you're tickety boo. Um, first up, <coughs> can't even <coughs> get out there. First off, apologies for <laughs> I'm going to be coughing a lot during this. I'm uh, just getting over COVID and it's left my chest a bit uh, phlegmy, a bit heavy. Hurts a bit. Um, I think I might have a chest infection. Um, I've got a doctor's appointment for tomorrow to sort it out. Well, I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow, not specifically for this. But anyway. <coughs> oh, God. So, a uh, quick little video. Um, this is all about uh, my uh, plans for paranormal uh, things that I'm getting up to this year. Things that I've already booked onto and a little bit about something that um, I would like to book onto as well, maybe. Um, so start off with um, the Williamson Tunnels in Liverpool. Uh, Veritas Paranormal are going there on the 13th of May, Saturday the 13th of May. Um, I think I'm pretty sure they've still got places there and I highly recommend you get a couple of tickets. Um, it's an amazing location. Um, out of the ordinary, something different if you're used to going to castles and museums and stuff like that. Um, definitely, definitely get yourself on this one. And the history of the place, it's not, um, you know, it's not really that old, so to speak, a couple of hundred years. Um, it's basically, the, the Williamson Tunnels were, um, if you know Liverpool well, it's basically on a hillside. And when Liverpool was first being built as an industrial centre in the early, well, the late, mid-late um, 18th century, the 1750s onwards, <coughs> or even before then, anyway, um, the buildings that were built around the riverside, around the Merseyside, and um, the docks and the wharves and the, the warehouses and stuff like that, um, they were all built, the stone was quarried locally, it was quarried on a place called Edge Hill, as suggests the edge of the hill um, and it's actually the, the hillside that Liverpool sticks to um, and by the 18, early 1800s and um, the town was expanding so much that houses needed to be built on that area so where the quarries were and um, they were basically like mines as well where mines have been the tunnels have been dug into the uh, hillside but it was all very unstable and um, so uh, shop, I think it was called George Williamson. I will check that. It could be Joseph or Robert or something like that. One of those Victorian industrial names. Um, he bought the land there and he employed ex-soldiers and ex-sailors who were fresh from the Napoleonic Wars. Doggo's maker <laughs> making an appearance. Maybe. Um, uh, you can't actually see him, but he's... He can hear me talking. He thinks I'm talking to him, bless him. But I'm not. Well, I am now. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the oh, don't knock the table. Oh, just this one step on <laughs> oh, This house is spooky. Um, yeah. Uh, where was I? Yeah, these tunnels and everything. They employed lots of ex-sailors, ex-soldiers. Um, they've been demobbed, um, so to speak. At the end of the Napoleonic Wars, uh, we'd uh, beaten Bonaparte, he was under lock and key, St. Helena, or Helena. Um, and yeah, all these soldiers were unemployed and needed work. Um, they needed to learn a new trade and he hired some expert masons in and he trained these men up to become masons themselves. Um, and they learned their trade, uh, shoring up these tunnels, um, you know, carving intricate stonework, things like that. And what's left behind um, was pretty much filled in, really. Uh, the Victorians used it as a, a dump. Um, so there's like uh, the people who uh, run the site, but the council owner run part of the site, and there's the friends of the Williamson Tunnels, they run part of the site as well. And um, it's, I'm pretty sure it's just the friends who are going and digging out these tunnels now, digging all the old rubbish out, so they're finding lots of, you know, things like old uh, pots and jars and things like that, and old toys and shoes and um, bones as well, which, yeah, just yeah, domestic, um, what's it called, you know, like calf bone from, you know, when people have tea, so to speak. Not so much uh, skeletons from people, murders and stuff like that. I mean, you never know. 
Um, they've still got a hell of a long way to go, so you never know what they're going to find. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I've asked Rob. He's the head honcho at uh, Very That's Paranormal, and he's pretty sure that it's the Friends of Williamson Tunnels. Their their sections that we're allowed to go down. Um, and yeah, the the tunnels are just amazing. They really are. Uh, part of them were used as uh, shelters during World War II, um, but they've, like I say, they've been digging out quite a bit lately in the recent years. I first heard about it maybe four or five years ago. Um, I'm sure I've seen it on Facebook. It's like a little news item kind of thing. Um, and I saw it and I've seen like a few news bits and they, like I say, the friends of uh, Williamson Tunnels, they've got their own little YouTube channel and um, showing what they've done, what they've been taken out and stuff like that. And I've followed it for a few years now and it's really, really fascinated us. And when I seen these uh, event, this event advertised, probably late last year, he advertised it, Rob. Um, and I, I was very much up for it. Yeah, definitely. It, it's, um, I know it, it it won't be on many people's book of list, but it's definitely on mine. Um, I'll tell you that. And like I say, I highly suggest um, if there's tickets left, snap them up because the, this place is going to be brilliant. It really is. I cannot wait for it. Um, 13th of May, Saturday the 13th of May. Um, in Liverpool, yeah, it's a great town. Good night out and everything. Uh, the event finishes at 3 in the morning. Um, normally... I would book a hotel and go back to the hotel for a couple hours kip, but I only live, I think, two, two and a half hours away from Liverpool by train. Um, the first train will be maybe eight, nine o'clock the following morning. It's on a Sunday, so it'll probably be nine o'clock, I would think. <coughs> I too, I don't die of COVID by the, yeah, cough a lung up or something. Um, so... I'm thinking of just uh, going down there the afternoon before, getting a bite to eat, going to the event, uh, finishing the event at three, having a walk down into town, because it's pretty much at the top of the town, so to speak, and then walking down the hill uh, towards the train station, Lime Street. I don't think it's that far from there, tell the truth. Um, and then mooching down into town, getting a Mackey Days or something, because it's Liverpool's a 24-hour party place, you know what I mean? Uh, Matthew Street, oof. Craigie, you can buy anything there, honestly, anything. Um, <laughs> you get offered anything, put it that way. Yeah, I mean, a few mates had some, um, yeah, some strange, <laughs> some strange questions asked in that street. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know what I'll do afterwards. Um, Kevin Ling, uh, met Mike down here since he's going, hopefully. Um, I need to get in touch with them to. To definitely make sure now. He went to RAF Binbrook late last year, another Veritas event. Uh, it was a decent night, good night. It finished at midnight, so it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't very long the event. Um, it was long enough, though. It was, it was still a good night. And um, Kev just drove straight down home after that event. Um, you see the dog mooching around the background. Yeah, bless him. Um, yeah, he just uh, went straight back down home. I booked a, a room for the pair of us. It was very much a room which came straight out of, uh, remember Daniel Radcliffe's Woman in Black? Woman in Black or Lady in Black? It's the Woman in Black, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I can't remember the, the person who wrote the book, but I've got the book. Well, my sister's got it anyway. Um, so I'll never see it again. God bless you, book. And um, yeah, it's... It, fantastic room it was you know Victorian kind of beds with a squeaky mattresses and everything um, but yeah he, he didn't actually stay he went back down home so so I got the room for the night um, and same again I, I don't like I say I, I'm going to have to get in touch with him to see whether I stay overnight if I do I'll probably visit a couple of places in Liverpool uh, museums um, the Liverpool Life Museum I've done some work with them in the past um, and that's a great place, it really is. One of the one of the best museums I've ever been to. It really is. Um if Kev's there, I'll take him along. Um if not, like I say, I'll probably just come home myself because I've been to Liverpool a few times. Um a chap called 
Mark Richards, Mark or Dave Richards, one or two. I know quite a few people with the surname Richards. I get confused between them to such an extent that I actually deleted one of them on Facebook and it was the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Richards. <coughs> um, yeah, uh, Liverpool's a great town, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, a couple of months' time, like I say, 13th of May. Um, try to begin the February as I do this, 3rd of February. So I've got plenty of time for that. And then after that, I booked up for um, Jersey uh, with PIGS Paranormal. Um, PIGS stands for Paranormal Inve Intelligence Gathering Services. Um, it used to, I'm 99% I'm sure anyway, it used to be Paranormal Investigation Group Sussex, but then they widened their borders, so to speak, and they do right along the south coast. Um, I've been to Guernsey with them before. And um, that was fantastic. Um, they did the German hospital two nights. It was very, very warm. It was like 40 degrees outside. Um, my poor little bonds got um, looked like a bag of pork scratchings the week later. <laughs> it was awful. Uh, but yeah, it was red hot. Um, but yeah, the, the investigation was great. Um, I think that was the first time I met Kevin O'Keefe as well. Um, I wouldn't say I was mates with Kevin O'Keefe, we, you know, friends on Facebook, but that's about it. Um, Kevin wasn't be much better than I do, but I kind of know him, you know what I mean? Uh, like like a lot of people who, you know, you'll have seen on TV and stuff. I kind of know them. Um, it's more than others, obviously. So, yeah, um, Jersey is June the 16th is Mont Orgil Castle, which I'll have butchered the pronunciation, I do believe. Um, and that is a fortress which goes back, um, well Mont Orgil means Mount Pride I do believe, my butchered French, Pride Mountain, something like that anyway. Um, and yeah it goes back to uh, the, I think I believe it's the 1200s, um, I think the, the first mention of it's 1212, something like that. Um, I don't have I haven't researched it yet because it's quite a far way. It's in June, like I say. Um, it's just kind of what I remember from reading about the Channel Islands. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure it first mentioned 1212. Because um, we lost the Channel Islands. It, it, Channel Islands became part of the, the Kingdom of England um, in 1066 when uh, William the Conqueror became King of England and Duke of Normandy. Um, and then it was kind of, after he died, his sons fought over, um, you know, fought to become the same as he, basically owned the same land that he did. Um, his youngest son, Henry, eventually did. Um, but then he died without a son. Um, his son actually died before him in a ship a tragedy at sea. Um, one from Barfleur to, I believe it was Southampton. Something like that, Portsmouth maybe. Um, and his ship hit some rocks and he died. Bless him, William, he was called. <coughs> um, and when he died, there was a, a massive civil war. Stephen of Blois, I pronounce, I pronounce it that way. Blois, or Blois, maybe. Um, he was nephew to King Henry the First, and King Henry the First wanted his daughter Matilda to rule. Um, but a lot of the barons said, hold on, she's you know, got boobs, she can't do that. Um, so we'll back Stephen. Um, but a fair few lords also said, well, this is what the king wanted when he was alive. And um, Matilda had a son as well called Henry. So it was kind of like, well, little Henry's a little bit too young, but we'll support his mother until little Henry comes of age, which personally I believe is the way it should have been. But um, Stephen thought otherwise and they had a, a civil war and then I believe at the end of that civil war Stephen turned around and said you know what little Henry should become king when I die so <laughs> yeah it was kind of uh, it's called the anarchy for a very good reason yeah it was uh, all over the place it was weird um digressing again I'm definitely going to get a t-shirt with sorry for digressing and then just point to it yeah I do that dog yeah dog's laying about my bed looking at me as if to say, what the hell are we doing? 
he does that quite a bit actually, I must admit. Um, so yes, 16th of June and then the following night we're at Elizabeth Castle, which is also in Jersey. Um, Elizabeth Castle is um, a little bit more interesting in the fact that it wasn't a fortification until 1592, uh, Sir Walter Raleigh, um, who not many people know he actually got beheaded um, as a traitor. But yeah, Sir Walter Raleigh at that time, he was the governor of the Channel Islands. And um, he had a castle built and he called it uh, Belle Isabella. So beautiful Elizabeth. Um, didn't stop getting his head chopped off, did it? But, but that's what he named the castle and it became Elizabeth Castle. Um, and it's actually, uh, like many places, uh, including Mont Gale, um, it's been added to and um, bits have been knocked down and uh, other bits have been added right away from you know the year it was built, so 1212-ish, probably around about 1204 really for the um, Mont Gale, I would have thought, because that's when we lost the Channel Islands, 1204, 1205, um, <clears throat> all the way up to World War II and like I said 1592 for Elizabeth Castle is the date of its uh, construction when it was first built. As a, a gun fortress as well, um, and like I say, World War Two, the Germans would have added their little bits and pieces, and um, probably not huge guns. Well, definitely not huge guns anyway to the these fortifications. Um, but you can see in uh, certain parts, I'm sure, seen um, photographs where the largest towers have been modified. So instead of having like a parapet on the top, it's actually got a concrete block on the top of the parapet. So you can still see through gaps on the parapet, but you protect this overhead from um, you know, the RF and the United States Army Air Force coming in and strafing you. Um, so yeah, uh, it's uh, Elizabeth Castle also has a bit of interest in history with the royal royalty. Um, in sixteen forty six. Um, King Charles I had pretty much lost the English Civil War on the mainland um, and he sent his son away. Uh, his son was also called Charles, his eldest son, the Prince of Wales at the time, Charles. And he stayed at uh, Elizabeth Castle for a little bit. And then he actually came back in 1649, September 1649, I want to say. Yeah, around all then. Um, now, King Charles I had been beheaded in January 1649, so by September, obviously a lot of places like um, Scotland, for example, um, and royalist garrisons here and there, including um, the Castle Elizabeth or Elizabeth Castle, and they had declared the then the previous Prince Charles, Prince of Wales, as King Charles II, and um, it's quite interesting we have King Charles III now. Um, a torpedo doesn't have to <laughs> flee to France one day. Um, but then again, uh, you never know. <laughs> you know, if these gas prices are still going up, I think we'll all be moving to Buckingham Palace, won't we? Yeah, gas and electric price. Um, so, yeah, that's my plans. Uh, definitely set in stone. I bought tickets for the events. Um, I get my next load of benefits at the end of the month, and I'll be buying travel to the Channel Islands. Um, as for Liverpool, like I say, it's not that far away. I can get a ticket, train ticket on the day, so to speak. Um, I don't think I'd save that much money booking it like three months in advance or anything like that. But then, you never know. Like I say, I get my benefits at the end of the month. I might see how much a train ticket is. Because I get a rail card now as well, so I get third off train travel. Um, but I'm planning on flying to the Channel Islands um, on a plane, obviously. Not, you know, that would not kill me. Um, when I went to Guernsey, I went by plane and um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. It was brilliant. It was uh, the planes we got there were Blue Island Group or something like that, and they fly these. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I can't remember the exact name, but they are Embraer aircraft and they are um, propeller turboprop aircraft. So, <coughs> yeah, it was a <laughs> <laughs> I've never been on a propeller aircraft in my life before and it, it's an experience it really really is because you're just thrown around in your seat <laughs> you know 
the pilot took from trying to dodge spit fires or something and um you know especially when you take off from southampton for some reason you just hit left and that's it for about an hour and you're just going round and yeah and then uh, yeah beautiful sights out the windows as well and when you turned up on your side you can look look one way and you see nothing but sky and sunlight and you look the other way and you can see people's allotments and cars and <laughs> stuff like that out the other window it's incredible it really is um <coughs> So yeah, I can't wait for that. Um, but like I say, the, the flights uh, Newcastle to Southampton, Southampton to Jersey in this occasion. Um, and then coming back, I think it's Jersey to Heathrow and Heathrow to Newcastle. Um, so that'll be a little bit new. Um, there is a direct flight I can get from Newcastle to Jersey, but they only fly on a Saturday. Um, and because I'm there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, well, I'm there definitely Friday and Saturday for the events. I, I can't get that weekly flight, um, which is a bit of a shame, but I can get a flight on the Thursday. It's just two planes going, like I said, Newcastle, Southampton, and then um, come back on the Sunday or the Monday. I think the Monday, actually, yeah. Um, I'll book some digs as well. I, I pay for them when I get there. Well, I'll pay for them a few weeks before I go, actually. Um, I think it's called Villa Nova or Villa Viva, something like that. Um, what was the name of that place in Only Fools and Horses that Del Boy and them stayed at in Margate when the buses weren't when the bus blew up and the trains weren't running? It was that Villa Nova? Villa Bella, yeah. You can drive a Villa Bella. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, brilliant. Love Only Fools, yeah. <coughs> so yeah they're the three places i've booked up to so far um and the uh, pigs also doing an event later in the year at um mitchell and priory um and i've been there a couple of times um the first time was um nothing much happened i don't think the first time i went there but it was a, a place I'd always wanted to go because I'd heard some great stories about the place. And the second time I went there, I got some a very interesting um, thing happened, basically, some phenomena. Um, um, if you know anything about Michelin Priory, um, one of the first people, well, sorry, uh, they used to have people who live there and um, look after the place, like a custodian. Um, and there was a chap called, I think it was Chris. Oh, what the hell was he called? That's going to bug me forever now. I'm going to have to ask. Michelle Hatchell, no, I'll ask her later. Um, well, this Chris chap, he, he moved in in the early 90s, I think. And um, I mean, this story is on most haunted episodes when they went there and it's on a couple of other um, uh, paranormal programs as well. So you've probably heard it if you've seen those. Um, and basically when he moved in there were lots of weird stuff happening um, and one of the things was he was laid in bed one night and I can't remember what he said he said he lived in the room below where this happened or above where this happened So, um, but he heard like scratching in the middle of the night as though furniture was being moved or something was being dragged along a floor and um, he eventually got the courage to go and see what this noise was and he went she went upstairs, he said, um, to this uh, old office kind of thing. And he opened the door and when he opened it, the noise stopped. And he looked inside and there was an old writing bureau, which I would love one of them for this room. <laughs> yeah. Even if it was haunted, you know, Peggy, the ghost will uh, enjoy the company. He knows that while I'm out, while I'm out and about. Um, but yeah, this old writing bureau had moved, but it had only moved a few inches. Um, and when he went to move it back, he noticed that it had actually moved quite a bit and then it had moved back to close to where um, it should have been, so to speak. And when he moved it out again, he noticed that three of the wheels were working, but one of the wheels wasn't and it left a scratch mark on the floor. And this scratch mark was in like a, an eight, either an eight or like an infinity sign kind of thing. Now, an infinity sign is associated with uh, Christianity. Um, and the the place was run by Augustine um well priors basically priests 
um, there wouldn't be monks there, so to speak. Um, so it could be associated with them, and it was interesting phenomena. And when I went there the second time, I taken um, I had an idea to see if we could get any kind of response when we were doing things like Ouija boards or planchette, table table, and stuff like that that pigs sometimes do. Um, I'm not that into the more spiritual side of things. Um, and I never actually physically take part. I always sit to the side and ask questions because I know the history of places before I go there. Um, not, that, <laughs> not in a psychic way. <laughs> not in a psychic way. I hear some of that. Um, I read about them. You know, I've got some books here and there's a shed load more books uh, just next door. And, yeah, I've got downstairs and all that. If I can never be asked to tidy everywhere up in one day for one day, um, I'll, I'll do like a little house tour maybe one day because... At the moment, my bedroom's half of a mess. My living room's nice and tidy. <laughs> the dining room's nice and tidy. Back bedroom's a total mess. Um, and then next week, the back bedroom and this room will be fine, but my downstairs will be a bit monkey. And yeah, I'm a single bloke. Um, play the disabled card now and again, shall I? No, no I'm not going to do that. But um, Yes, uh, I've taken some... I just went on online to the to the Augustinian um orders on website basically um because I knew that various monastic orders had different prayers for different days of the week sometimes or sometimes just different parts of the year. Um and also they have like their own special set of prayers that they would say before meals. <coughs> oh goodness. Um so yeah, I went online, I uh, wrote down a couple of prayers and while other people were pushing around a planchette, um, which is like the triangular shape bit of wood with a pencil or a pen through one end, um, somebody gave pigs a, a brilliant idea to use a, a whiteboard with a black marker through and then you wipe it off clean so you don't have loads of paper to take. Um, it was a brilliant idea, genius idea. I wonder who came up with that. Hmm. Yeah, um, so yes, uh, uh, I was reciting these prayers. I can't remember the prayers for life. Um, oh, God save me. It was mentioned a few times. Um, it didn't work, obviously, but, well, not on me. But when we took away the planchette and we looked at the what it had drawn, it had drawn a, a, a figure eight multiple times over and over again. Um, nobody else in the room seemed to know what the hell it was, but... I saw it straight away and I knew, oh my god, that's what Chris, um, what the hell was his name? Oh yeah, Chris Lad anyway. He's probably not called Chris actually, I'm sure he's called Chris. Um, and it was the same kind of thing that had been etched into the floor uh, from this bureau that had moved by itself when, when he lived there. Um, and that for me was brilliant as well. And I've also seen a photograph someone took at Michelin Priory. Um, and sadly, this person doesn't want the photograph sharing um, everywhere on the internet and um, you know newspapers or anything seeing it or all like that. Um, but Tim Brown, the owner of Pigs, he sent me a copy. And obviously, he promised. He told me he promised I wouldn't send it anywhere, and I haven't. Um, and he also said, like you know, this person doesn't want exposure or anything. So I won't go into too many details, obviously, but Tim says it's genuine, and I believe Tim, and this picture is 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 the best paranormal photograph I've ever seen in my life. And I wish I could share it with you, I really do. Um, but I deleted it off Facebook um, a long time ago, so I don't even have that picture now, that image anywhere. Um, like I say, you gotta respect people's wishes when you know the, the the that's that's what they want, you know. And um, if they want to release it at a later date, it's their picture. They can do that. Um, but uh, yeah, stunning, stunning picture. And I'm I'm not going to say what it was, where exactly it was. Um, but it was a picture of Mitchell and Priory, and a couple of years ago now. That was really really good. And they uh, pigs go there on October the. Sixth, I believe, sixth or fourth, beginning of October, put it that way. And um, yeah, I might get myself down there. It's a few months after the um, 
the Channel Islands gig and yeah, it, it just keep my foot in the door so to speak. So that'll be four for this year. I, I, I'd say I'll, I'll probably definitely do that fourth one. Um, you know, I did uh, I think I did six last year, six events overall, four with um, 13 Paranormal, yeah. Um, I did one with Pigs, Tunbridge Castle, it was a great night. Um, and I did, what did I go with? Or oh, RF Bimbuck with um, Veritas. Yeah, so yeah, six six last year, and that was, you know, one every couple of months. Um, although I must admit, it was like, you know, <laughs> one every four months, and then I did three in the space of a month or some stuff like that, yeah. Um, it was always good. I, I always... I always find some enjoyment anyway in each place I go to. Like I said, the, the 13 paranormal thing, the, especially the last place I went to, I didn't enjoy that so much. Um, but like I said, it's all done now, it's all in the past. Um, no more with them, thank God. Um, yeah, the, you know, it's, even if. Even if you're watching this and you're not invested in the paranormal and you just, you know, you've just been listening to me for half an hour waffling on, you know, just book a local one. Um, there are events up and down the country every weekend. Um, different companies, different event companies, all various uh, methods, um, various talents as well, I would say, you know, with regards to knowing what they do and um, the way they make you feel, the customer service aspect and everything. Um, and yeah, just give it a go, even if it's just once in your life, and you might be hooked. You know, this might be a hobby that you take up for the rest of your life. You'll you'll definitely meet some decent people. Um, you definitely, you know, uh, the amount of times I've been on events and um, I've, I've been chatting to a fellow, and he's like, oh yeah, the wife dragged me to this. I've got no interest whatsoever. And then by the end of the night, you know, he's got his little dowsing rods and he's going all over the place, and he's like, wow, this is amazing. And, or he's, you know, he's got his, uh, <coughs> got his uh, K2 meter or whatever, and he's like, oh, wow, this, this is amazing, this is brilliant, and, you know, it's really good, it's been really good. So, yeah, I think that's it for the, my little paranormal update. Um, is that all, Doug? Yeah? I need to know. Can you sneak in? Can you sneak it? You can't sneak in. You're going to have to come around here. Here. Come around up there. You're going to knock the tripod and then we'll be broke. We'll be broke. <coughs> nah. I might take him for a walk actually. The sun seems to be coming out and then um, give us a bit of fresh air. Yes, even though that window was open. <sighs> Should we go and give somebody else COVID? Eh? Yeah, okay, let's go and do that. I'll go outside and kiss the stranger. Right. Show for now, folks.